Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Music Den. I am, of course, your host, Armando Venditti. Hoping you guys are having a good Wednesday morning. It is 11 degrees Celsius here in Edmonton. Cloudy, overcast, not a very good day. Perfect time to do another video. In this episode of the Music Den, I'm going to be doing a bit of a music review. I got this CD in the mail a couple of days ago, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm going to be doing a, a more in-depth album discussion with uh, Bill Schuster later on. Uh, went through both, have had time to digest this album fully, but I wanted to give you a bit of, um, bit of a reaction to what I've heard so far. The album is the much-anticipated uh, Dark Side of the Moon Redo or Redux by Roger Waters. Uh, this is one of the most, if not the most, anticipated rock-related recordings to come out this year. It was released on Friday, October the 6th, uh, released on Cooking Vinyl Music. Um, this album has caused uh, a bit of a stir, or quite a stir, I should say, within the uh, Pink Floyd fan base. Uh, some people say that um, he should not have redone the album. Um, I will show you uh, the inside of the album cover. I should say also that this album, the the finish on the cover is uh, a gloss finish. So there you go. There's the inside of the cover. Yeah, it has a gloss finish. So it's very difficult to get a good grip on without it slipping out of your hands. And this is the back of the cover. Sorry for the glare. Um, not very memorable in terms of a cover. Um, I love dogs. Everyone out there knows who knows me knows I love dogs. But this was not a good album cover for this um for this release for me uh, and as you can tell if you can tell if you look closely into the eye of the dog you see the reflection of Roger Waters holding up a copy of Dark Side of the Moon the original this um, was announced in February of 2023 I should also tell you that it comes with a book uh, sorry for the finger um, with the lyrics, um, I sure sh I'll show you a bit of what's on the inside. So here you have the lyrics on the inside um, of the covers. A pyramid um, format, upside down and right side up pyramid format. And on the back of the cover, you also have a nice shot of a dog. Um, again, forgive the glare. I'm trying to, there you go. Um, again, this album was announced in February of 2023 that he was that Roger Waters was going to redo this album. Um, too much fanfare, both positive and negative. Um. Did he believe that this was going to be a replacement for the original Dark Side of the Moon? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think you can replace uh, the original Dark Side of the Moon. And I don't think you should even attempt to. This coincides with the 50th anniversary um, of Dark Side of the Moon. As you know, uh, Pink Floyd have released um, multiple editions of the uh, of the album in light of the anniversary of the 50th anniversary. Um, and people have also complained about that, that they've basically re-released stuff that people already have. Uh, they have uh, released an, an immersion box set back in, I believe it was 2011. And I have that set. And they've re-released, again, a 50th anniversary box set of the album. If you have the immersion box set, like I do, you do not really need the 50th anniversary edition, but I digress. 
um, about the album. It is a stripped down, reinterpretation, reimagined version of Dark Side of the Moon. None of the other members of Pink Floyd, the remaining members of Pink Floyd, David Gilmour or Nick Mason, have participated in the recording of the album. Uh, Roger Waters, in February of 2023, also stated in a very infamous quote, and I'm going to paraphrase. Um, he basically said, let's get this straight. Dark Side of the Moon was my idea. Yes, we were a band and the others contributed, but let's be real. It was my idea. It was my concept. It's my album. Blah, blah. I don't subscribe to that. I do believe that this album was a conscious band effort. Yes, Roger Waters wrote all the lyrics for the tracks, but without the other three, it wouldn't be anything. The other three, David Gilmore, Richard Wright, and Nick Mason, contributed to the recording, the imagining, the development, the whole release of the album. Okay, and uh, Roger Waters has since dialed back the tone of his comments, um, stating that Gilmore did do some amazing work on the album, and uh, Richard Wright did contribute some fantastic uh, compositions to the piece. Um, this is basically an album of an individual looking back on his life. Again, this is my interpretation upon listening to it. This is an individual who, at, I believe he's, um, Roger Waters is 80 years old right now. Um, I do believe he is looking back on his life and he's thinking, have we done all that we can do? Is there more to do? Have we accomplished everything that we've wanted to accomplish in this life? Have we learned from our mistakes in the from the past? Are we going to continue to make said mistakes going on into the future? Um, it is a much scaled down version of Dark Side of the Moon. The three tracks speak to me on the run and any color you like. I'll have the spoken word uh, passages from Roger Waters um, in the pieces. The uh, spoken word passage on Speak to Me is from the track um, um, Free Four, I believe, from 1972, from Obscure by Clouds. Um, there are no guitars, uh, the guitar solos on this album. He is using um, as his backing band, his touring band. The only name that I do find recognizable in the listing is John Karen, who has also worked with Pink Floyd as a touring musician. He plays keyboards and synthesizers on this album. Uh, Roger Waters plays bass on one track on the album, he provides all the vocals. He's singing in the lower register, um, very monotone, very um, even keel all the way through. There are no peaks or valleys in his vocal performance. Um, <clears throat> Is this a replacement for Dark Side of the Moon, my honest opinion? No. Is this a companion piece for Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Um, I do believe that he has the right to re-record the album. Um, I do believe that he may have made mistakes in saying that uh, the other members of Pink Floyd basically were his backing band to do this album uh, on the original. Uh, he also, I believe, regrets what he has said uh, because he basically retracted what he had said. Um, would I listen to this album more than once? Yes, I would. It's a grower of an album. Um, it's recorded fantastic. The the production on it sonically is amazing. Um, there are four singles released from this album: "Money," "Time," 
speak to me and breathe or uh, speak to me and breathe were released as a double a single um this album has re received quite a bit of criticism because basically in some people's opinion you have basically whizzed on a picasso uh do i believe that he's done that no i believe that he has just reinterpreted a piece of art that he had created with Pink Floyd and wanted to um, re-express how he was feeling at this stage of his life. Um, do I regret getting it? No, no. I do believe that this is a fantastic album, um, barring the, the uh, album cover, because I do believe that this could have been done a, a hell of a lot better in terms of putting up, uh, using a close-up of a dog's eye um, for an album cover. But um, I do believe it is a good album. Um, Bill Schuster and I will be doing a much more in-depth uh, discussion on this album once I've listened to it a, bit, uh, a couple of more times. And um, just to give you our collective opinion on this album, so please, you can check this album out in its entirety. It clocks in at around uh, uh, 47 minutes and I believe 23 seconds in total. Um, <clears throat> and, and final question, can you look at this album separately from Dark Side of the Moon, the original? Yeah, yeah, I think you can. If you go into it with the idea that this is a, this album is a separate entity from Dark Side of the Moon, the original, um, I believe that you can enjoy it, you can listen to it, and take from it what you want and what you will, um, and enjoy it for what it is. Okay? So please uh, check out the album. It is on YouTube. Um, there is a file on YouTube um, of the album in its entirety. So you can listen to it before you buy it and make up your own mind. But if you've listened to the album and uh, you have an opinion, please put your comments down below and let me know what you think of Dark Side of the Moon Red Redo or Redox, however, however way you want to describe it or pronounce it. Um, and let me know what you think. There are no right or wrong answers, right? Um, it is basically art. And art can be interpreted in many different ways, countless ways. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think of the re uh, remake of um, Dark Side of the Moon by Roger Waters. And uh, click like and subscribe and uh, click the notification bell to keep yourselves on top of any new content that I've got coming up. Um, I will be doing a show on Saturday with Mr. Peter Kent from the Lizard King channel. We'll be ranking our uh, favorite Doors albums. Um, so that's going to be a good show. I again want to thank everybody who has watched the uh, Pink Floyd album ranking. That was a hell of a show to do. And I want to thank each of the panelists that appeared, uh, Bill Schuster, Peter Kent, uh, Andrew Cox, and uh, Brian McFadden to, uh, for appearing on the show. And for Mr. Ryan Gavalier for giving me his list. Uh, please let me know what you think of that episode. And I will see you soon with another video. So please take care of yourselves and one another. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.